Good morning. Welcome to online worship with the First Unitarian Church of Worcester, Massachusetts. I'm Sarah Stewart. I'm the minister here. I'm leading worship this morning with our director of music, Will Sherwood, our director of faith development, Juliet Donaldson, our assistant director of music, James Haupt, our children's coordinator, Abigail Hannaford Riccardi. Our guest musician is Mason Chan on oboe, and our volunteer camera operator is Sam Baxter. It is wonderful to have all of you at home joining us this morning. Here at First Unitarian Church, we strive in loving fellowship to honor the sacred, connect with each other, and serve justice. We are a welcoming congregation. Whatever your race, class, nationality, sexual orientation, or gender identity, we are delighted to have you with us this morning. We are thinking of all of you with love and affection during this difficult time when we cannot be together in person. You can stay connected to the church through our website, firstunitarian.com, our Facebook page, and our newsletter. If you would like to receive our e-newsletter, please go to firstunitarian.com and click subscribe to our newsletter at the bottom of any page. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. In the spirit of love, we light this chalice. Please join in renewing the covenant of our church as we have set it together for more than a hundred years. In the love of truth and in the spirit of Jesus, we unite for the worship of God and the service of all. This story is from our fourth source of wisdom and knowledge, Jewish and Christian teachings, which call us to love our neighbor as ourselves. It's a story about Jesus and a miracle that took place over 2,000 years ago. In those days, Jesus was such a popular preacher that wherever he went, crowds of people would follow him, hoping to hear him speak. One day, Jesus and his disciples went far out into the country to escape the crowds and have some alone time. But the people were so desperate to hear his message that they followed. Unable to escape the crowds, Jesus sat at the top of a hilltop and spoke to the people. Years later, his disciples said that more than 5,000 people listened to Jesus that day. Jesus told the people many things. Love your neighbor as yourself. Share what you have with others. Don't build up treasure on earth but instead build treasure in heaven. And the people listened, captivated by his words. As the day wore on and the sun began to set, the disciples started to worry. Many people had come without food and there were no nearby villages where people could go and eat. The disciples urged Jesus to send the crowd away before it got too late. But Jesus said, don't worry. You can give them something to eat. How much food do we have? The disciples looked in their packs 
and brought out five loaves of bread and two fishes. This would not be enough to feed 5,000 people. But Jesus again said, don't worry. He blessed the food and put it in some baskets. And the disciples distributed the food around the crowd. It was then that the miracle happened. Miraculously, everybody had enough to eat. Even though the disciples had only put in two fishes and five loaves of bread. In fact, there was so much food that they actually had plenty left over after everyone had eaten. Now some people believe that this was a miracle from God, that God magically multiplied the food so that everyone had more than enough to eat. But perhaps this was a miracle created by the people who were there listening to Jesus. They had heard Jesus' message and when they saw the disciples freely give their food to feed others, those who had also brought food for the day put some of their food in the baskets too. And when everyone shared what they had, they discovered that there was plenty of food for everyone. After Jesus died, his early followers, the first Christians, followed these teachings, living communally, and sharing what they had with each other and anyone in need. I wonder what would happen in the world today if everyone followed the example of Jesus and those early Christians, sharing what they had with others. And I wonder which version of the miracle you prefer, the miracle from God or the miracle from man? Thank uh... Please join me in the spirit of prayer. Spirit of love, source of our being, stay with us in the day that is now beginning. Be our companion in the way, kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you in our minds and through our actions. Be with us in the breaking of bread and the sharing of compassion. Stay with us through hard times and grant us peace. Amen. Please continue your own thoughts and prayers in silence.
In this time of prayer and meditation, we share the joys and sorrows of our church with one another. Christy Volkerding lights a candle in memory of her wife, Donna, whose 70th birthday would have been today. Donna died almost five years ago and is missed still by those who loved her. Ginny and Jean Johnson light a candle for all of those who are grieving, painful pending, and final losses. We hold all of these prayers of memory and healing in our hearts. We know there are those prayers which go unspoken among us. And so we reach out to one another in compassion as we say together the prayer of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. First Unitarian Church relies on your financial support to maintain our diverse ministries and programs. This week, we began planning for online summer worship services. The coming of age youth met via video conference, and the family support circle helped a refugee family in their search for emergency housing. If you would like to support all we do as a church, text 844 906 2338, followed by the amount you wish to donate to First Unitarian Church. You can also go to firstunitarian.com and click Give Online at the top of any page. I invite your generous contributions to the good work of First Unitarian Church. A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 16. The whole assembly of people complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, 
when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for the day. I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew upon the ground. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The house of Israel called it manna, It was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. When we first began to take this COVID epidemic seriously here on the East Coast, when we began to hear those reports about serious illness in Washington State and the spread of the illness in the United States, for a lot of us, the very first sign of an effect on our everyday lives was at the grocery store. I remember that even when the illness was still only in China and Italy, it became difficult to get cleaning supplies at the grocery store. Uh, You couldn't buy bleach. It was hard to buy disinfecting wipes or even ordinary soap. And then as people began to fear that they might have to stay home for a long period of time or they might get ill and not be able to leave, then they began to buy food of all kinds. I remember uh, not being able to buy tomato paste of all things, I think because people were planning on making a lot of pasta sauce. I remember one day when I went to the store and couldn't find any mushrooms of any description at the grocery store. And I think here in Worcester, we're better off than in some places in America. We must have a a good number of grocery stores per capita. Uh, There has not been a huge shortage of food here. But in some parts of the country, a friend of mine has not been able to get fresh meat or fresh vegetables uh, for about a month. There is a Jewish saying that although we humans like to believe that we are in control of our lives, God is in charge of three fundamental realities, birth, death, and the rain. And from the rain, of course, comes our food. One of the spiritual lessons of this crisis is that we are dependent always on the earth and on one another for our daily bread. Living in the United States, in what we call an advanced civilization, especially if we were in the middle class or had enough money to get by on a day-to-day basis, we perhaps cast an illusion over ourselves, an illusion of independence. And the more privilege we had, the more powerful this spell was that we cast. We might have said to ourselves things like, well, I have everything I need. Or good food and exercise help keep me safe from illness. We might even have said, oh, I don't need any help. That, that, you know, um, this is something that Yankees get teased for, for saying that, that we don't need any help, uh, even sometimes when we do. And an ability to look on the world's problems with some pity, thinking that we were insulated from them and they wouldn't happen to us. 
And now this pandemic reveals just how dependent we are on so many things. If you're unemployed, you may be thinking, how long can I afford food and do I need to have a budget for my grocery shopping? So we're dependent on an economic system that provides jobs for everybody. Some people are dependent on food pantries because otherwise they don't have enough food for their families. Food pantries in the country are seeing more clients than ever right now. So we are dependent on generosity and on a government that helps redistribute uh, resources to where they're needed most. We're dependent on what we're able to buy at the grocery store. So we are dependent on commerce and on a system of trade that helps produce uh, goods that we buy in a store. This week we've been hearing about meatpacking plants in trouble all over the country. And so we are dependent on the health of other people, people we don't even know, workers whose names and faces we will never see, but we depend on their health and their well-being and a system that supports it. In our country, we produce more food than is needed for people to eat every day, but we don't have a distribution method that makes sure it gets to everybody. So we're dependent on systems and infrastructure that help get the food from where it's produced to where it's needed. There are millions of children across America who rely on schools for breakfast and lunch every day. And so we are dependent on a safety net that provides food to hungry children. We need to be able to shop without fear, to be able to go into grocery stores and get what we need. And if we can't do that, then we are dependent on neighbors to help us and friends who can do that shopping for us and deliver us what we need if our immune systems don't allow us to go to the store right now. And of course, we are always dependent on the earth, which produces the food and without which we could not live. Truly, we depend on the rain and on the sun and on the growing power of the earth for our own birth and our own life. And in the midst of this crisis, even though all of us are feeling the pinch in one way or another, our privilege still matters. And those of us with more privilege are weathering this crisis better. The fact that we have to eat every day, that no matter how advanced we are as a civilization, we are utterly dependent on the earth and on each other for our lives. I think that this is why humans create sacred moments around eating, why we give thanks when we sit down to a meal together. It is why eating itself, that act of acknowledging our dependence on the earth and on each other, is a reminder of ultimate reality and of what matters most in our lives. This is why food is a sacred focus in all of the world's religions. In the communion service and the Eucharist in Christianity, in keeping kosher and celebrating sacred meals in Judaism, and in the holy month of Ramadan, which is going on right now when Muslims fast during the day and increase their charitable giving to others. In my house, we try to make mealtimes sacred in an effort to get everybody to slow down for even just a few minutes and recognize the sanctity of what we're doing together when we sit down to dinner. So we try to say grace before we eat, and different people choose the grace every night, but for maybe for over a year now, almost always, the grace that we say is simply to hold hands with each other and each person to say one thing that they are grateful for. It can be something big or small. Sometimes it's the food we are about to eat. Sometimes it's just one good thing that happened that day. Andy, my husband, these days he always says he's grateful that we're safe and healthy. And that, that is a big piece of gratitude in our hearts right now. 
It's a reminder that eating is sacred and that our love for one another as a family is sacred and that we show each other love and we respect our dependence on each other and on the earth by sharing our gratitude. But it's not just my family that I'm thinking of right now. The larger community is in my heart as well. And there are things that we can do to help support food security in Worcester County. The United Way is helping to coordinate immediate needs in our community. If you go to worcesterma.gov, you can find a link to donate to the United Way of Central Massachusetts. And the Worcester County Food Bank, which supports food pantries in our area, including Cardi Cupboard, uh, the food pantry at Wesley United Methodist Church, which has reopened with our help in the past few weeks. They provide food and they are a place where you can donate food or money for them to help buy food for needy people in Worcester County. And it's even possible for you to go to a food bank and pick up food for someone else who needs it. The person who goes to the food bank does not need to be the person who will ultimately eat the food. I know next door at Wesley, all they're asking is for the zip code and ages of the people who will ultimately get the food. And even if you don't have that information, you can still get food for a needy family. So if that's you, if you know of somebody who has food need and you could help them by picking up from a contactless um, food pantry, all you have to do is open your trunk. The Wesley Food Pantry is open on Wednesdays from 1 to 3, every Wednesday, 1 to 3 in the afternoon. And they're accepting donations on Wednesday mornings. When the Israelites were in Egypt, they could imagine that when they were free, they would be the captains of their own fates. They would be in charge of their destiny. All they needed was freedom, and then they would have everything they thought. But once they were free and in the wilderness, they realized that, in fact, they were still dependent. They needed the grace of God for birth and death and the rain, for food that they could not produce themselves. They realized that they were still living beings who needed to eat. They were dependent on the earth and on one another. When the crowds who gathered around Jesus became hungry, the disciples at first wanted to send all those people away to find their own food. Let them be dependent on themselves, the disciples might have said. But Jesus said to them that their faith taught them to share the blessings they had and to encourage all who were there to do the same thing. And in this way, everyone was fed. Jesus reminded them of their dependence on one another. And we, too, are dependent on one another. When we break bread, we know the sacred because we remember our dependence. We give thanks for blessings we did not earn when we ensure that all in our community can eat. I love you all. Amen.
Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the holy, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit forever. Amen.